The Humphreys are a Christian family that live in the suburbs of Wabi City, Nigeria. They are acquaintances of the Morgans, who not only reside in the same neighborhood, but also attend the same church. Their children are close pals. Simeon is loved by his parents for his brightness and excellent academic performance. Traits that have gotten him in trouble more than once. He was caught explaining to Cynthia in church what condom is, as he was taught in school. They taught you this in school, and you are drawing it. And you are here listening to this. Eh? You are drawing this in church. Come, 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 come. This led both of them, as well as their parents, to the pastor's office for a resolution. Both parents were disappointed at their kids' behavior, but the Humphreys more so, claiming that Simon's reprehensible behavior is a clear indication of poor parental home training. Children are funny at times. No matter how you train them, they tend to catch you up by surprise. Hmm. Me? This kind of surprise comes me out. Mama, um, see. See, as Pastor Rafi like said, I don't approve of their actions, but children will always be kids. Is that the way you train your children? Ah! You! The next time I see or hear this rubbish in you, you will know the kind of mother I am. You will see the other side of me. Pastor, thank you for everything. Madam, let's get me. Confess. Brother Morgan, you have to be prayer. Fifteen years had gone by with lots of changes in everyone's lives. The Humphreys relocated to another state, thus breaking every semblance of ties with the Morgans. Not for both kids though, who are now young adults, their friendship remains strong, even with a romantic undertone. Simeon is a cops member serving in the same establishment where Cynthia works as a financial administrator. Their same work environment gave them ample opportunity to foster their relationship the more without the knowledge of both parents. Cynthia brought home a sweetheart, Simeon, for parental approval. She was disappointed instead. Her parents were initially warm-hearted towards their future son-in-law, but vehemently disapproved of his person on learning about his true identity. He is one of the Morgans. The cathedral by the main market. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the same one, sir. Your daddy used to drive there's two thirty green color. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, that is it. Come see me, Thank you, sir. They maintained their age long sentiment that Simeon was not properly trained from childhood. Hence, he is not suitable for their daughter. I thought he was a responsible guy until he revealed his identity. When I wrote to be boy that was teaching her to use condom some, some years back, only God know how many more guests he must have taught her to use condom since, since last time I saw him. And he won't use himself? Jesus Christ. Jesus. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Mommy, Daddy, you know what can't be serious. Never never change his spots. Oh, we I'm are dead serious. serious. And that guy is not good for you. Jeez. That it wasn't what you thought. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Yes. Simeon is well aware of Cynthia's parents' approval, as they've made him know in no uncertain terms. The lovers are presently in a sea of confusion. As their relationship is precariously hanging in the balance, Simon's parents are not in the know about his relationship with Cynthia, and they can't with confidence bank on their approval, Lydia. What is the way out for these love beds?
ever broken dishes in your house and then your parents remind you of something totally unrelated that you did 10 years ago and you are wondering how did that get so fast like what, what just happened welcome to african parents and their world but then again when does this you know very retentive memory when does it become harmful and when does it become just totally wrong welcome today to decisions we're going to be talking about friendly ties and how to undo the good memories of our african parents um, and a lot more my name is Rachel Biogi and I'm your host. Joining me today for our deliberation is Reverend Dr. Eo Ubioro. He's a national presbyter of Church of God Mission International, UBG branch. Um, he's also a chief lecturer and director of research and publications at the College of Education. Well, you're welcome, sir. Thank it's you. It's good to have you around. Thank you. And um, alongside with him is Pastor Chijoke Okwobo. She is the editor of Pure Passions, which is a teenage um, you know, magazine publication. And she's also um, the anchor of many teenage outages and also a children coach welcome ma thank you for having me i say she has two beautiful daughters it's good to have you around you. Um, going straight to the discussion of, of today uh, in this internet age we have a lot of smart children you know five year old ten year old really really smart like before we came on um before we started shooting i was thinking of how i experienced um like a seven year old or thereabout telling an adult that, uncle, why are you smelling? She didn't mean to insult him. She was just saying the obvious, you know? So how do we help children? First of all, how do we differentiate smart and ignorant children from smart and um, mischievous children? I'm going to uh, start with Pastor um, CJ. Like, how do you know these children? How do you help to say, okay, this one is just smart and ignorant? Well, um, to be able to distinguish and differentiate between the two, by their fruits, you shall know them. Okay. So based on your interaction with these children, you know certain times they do the things in your presence. So you take note of that and you correct them there. That no, yes, what you said is right, but the way you went about it is not okay. You do not talk to your elders in okay. that manner. Okay. So we, we are able to know the difference. You know, from interaction they talk a lot. They express themselves a lot. So while doing the expressions on a daily basis, you're able to, you know, hold them on this part, say, okay, no, you don't do that. And then, hey, you can do this or to this extent, okay. or to this point. Okay. Um, 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 Reverend, you, you, you have grown-up children who are, you know, giving back to their own children and all of that. How do you help, you know, train, the you just say how we should train a child the way you should, you should go. How do we help, you know, um, mold the child to, to use his smartness for more, better things, you know, to push him in the smart and good way. Yeah, I think the first that the parents should know, either the father or the mother, that children by nature are seriously ignorant. That's why when the baby poops, you can put finger there and put it in the mouth. As far as it's concerned, everything is experimental, so to speak. So the father or the mother should take note of that. Not when the child does the wrong thing, oh, there are demons, there are no demons there. As the child grows up, See, the Bible says, deal with women according to knowledge. I think parents should have knowledge of features of children who are growing up. Okay. From zero age to early childhood, the father, the father should know, the mother should know as well. Okay. So that when you know that, that the child is manifest, I say, well, I know. I know where you are going to, but you see, if you do this one, this one will happen. So do it this way. We have a sort of those you play with fire, fire will burn you. But when you don't know what the fire is, you're not able to help the child. Okay. The child is still experimental. There was a little girl who saw the mother pregnant. I said, Mommy, what happened? What is it? The mother said, I ate food. It's food. <laughs> say, hey, so when you eat plenty of food. Mm. You know? Yeah. But when the child went to school and said, Mommy, I now understand why you're, you know, that was because. She had understood, but we should be able to know their growing tendencies. They talk, they ask questions, and we should come to their level, knowing that they will get to where they will get to, but they should be guided smoothly. Okay, so not not all, not all smart children are demonic or of course not troublesome. Of course not. I think that's something that a lot of our parents needs to know all of that. Okay, the next person I want to ask is on discipline. Um, we, we will think that as the world is growing. A lot of people are also growing, you know, reading books on parenting, but it's, it's actually not true. I see young parents, like 30-year-old parents, who are doing the same thing that 
my mom did that my mom would not even do again and, and i'm wondering if this ignorance is you know re replicating in each generation you know, how do we discipline give children discipline that's proportionate to their actions i know i don't know about you but growing up then you could get flogged and beaten and castigated for breaking a plate and which is is discipline but sometimes i think the discipline our parents give us they're just this is the, the scale is imbalanced so how do parents you know learn to give the right proportion of discipline for an act for a cg okay discipline a child we should understand first that times have changed right so the way it was when we were growing up and the way it is now that far is a far cry so we should know that our parents disciplined us based on the knowledge that they had at that time okay and what we were exposed to at that time you could have been beaten for going out and playing for so long mm -hmm. these days children don't go out to play they are yeah. always in the house so you see that the patterns have changed right and so Many of our parents also beat us based on they just displaced aggression on us. <laughs> right? They came back from work, they had a bad day, and they just put it out on us. Yeah. For the most little, the tiniest uh, 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 offense. But now we have children who are always at home, so they didn't go out to play. Right? You have toys for them. So the things that they do are far different from the things that they were doing. Maybe they talk too much or they said something else something they were not supposed to say ignorantly. So when you're disciplining the child, you must first understand the motive of the child. Mm -hmm. Where is this child coming from? Is this child being naughty or is this, is this child just being ignorant? So that you can correct the child. If the child is just ignorant, you can correct the child. No, you don't do this. There are some things that the child may do ignorantly that you may still need to punish the child, but not like you're going to you know, pour it down on the child. But the things that the child does, with the motive of, yes, I was being naughty. You know also how to um, correct that child. But you, in the correction of these children, you don't correct them to bring down their self-esteem. Yeah. Right? Because once you kill that, the child is always going to, will always want to do things behind you. Yeah. So in your presence, the child is going to be all holy and nice and gentle. But once you are not there, the child is going to be something else. So you're going to be having a child who is a hypocrite. He's yeah, something in front of you and it's something behind you. So that when something happens and they say, oh, your child did this, you will swear. You would, you would, you would say that, oh, like my, my child my can cannot do this. I know my child. But the truth is that you do really do not know your child based on the way you've handled this child over time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, we'll have to go to another question, sir. What, what extent is too much for sex education? It can never be too much. Okay, like, t it can never be too how much. young it, it, is too it, it, young to, you know, to open up to a child for sex education? No, I feel like what you're saying is we are thinking of the, the, the sexual aspect. Sex education is more than a man and a woman sleeping together. It is more than that. How do you take care of yourself as a boy of your organs? How do you take care of yourself as a lady? How do you sit down? How do you behave? Even as a baby, this child should be taught that way. Okay. Be taught that way. Okay. So it's not, you, you won't teach the advanced level. You teach the KG, okay. the crash type of it, the curriculum. So what, what exactly is advanced and not advanced these days? You know, like we, before we could probably define what is advanced, but right now, it's like anything goes. It should be in line with the age of the child. Okay. And at that time, some children are fast learners. But the environment now is different from what we had some years ago. You see, a, 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 a mother was telling me, that she had asked her, ask her, Mommy, what's about you? What's not about sexual something? And uh, the mother said, no, 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 you have, you have to. She said, okay, Mommy, I know what to do. I know, I know where to get to. He was going to go to the internet to find it out. And the mother said, no, no, come on, let me tell you what it is. <laughs> so we should be able to teach them. There's nothing there because if we don't they will make mistakes and when they make mistakes they come it could stay with them for life yeah so parents should teach them the elementary okay. watch yourself sit well don't expose your bumper all those are two things talk about it they don't say don't let anybody touch you that one is gone that you touch a girl doesn't mean the girl become pregnant okay. people don't touch their security so i think parents should take note of that and they should be taught right from the word go 
we would, I would have to go on a break. When we come back, we'll dive into um, the particular situation and how to help the guys. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're still watching decisions. Before we went on the break, we we're just talking about sex education and children. When is too much? What is too much for how old? How much exposure should we give to you know children of different ages? And uh, Pastor CJ had something to say. Okay, um, I wanted to add to what um, Doctor right. has said that um, sex ed education starts from the home, right? Not just in school. So the parents have the duty to teach these children right from when they're small for example for our children we taught them don't allow anybody out apart from mommy or daddy touch your private parts right and we told them what their private parts were their armpits their private organs and so many other parts of their bodies right so that you will not just say oh this i went to the, use the restroom and this person cleaned me up you should be able to know what to do. We have to teach them how to use the restroom themselves from very early so that we don't expose them to certain things that are happening now. Yeah. They have issues where cousins come to the house, relatives come to the house, house helps. They molest these children. The parents do not know. And these children grow up and they become wayward and you don't even know where it's coming from. It's coming from. So sex, sex education is something that needs to be part and parcel of the household. Outside of what the school is teaching, the Home has to be the, the hub of where these things are being taught so that they can know for themselves and know that their parents are backing them up when such things happen. Because when you don't teach your children and they only hear it from school, when it happens, they may be too scared to tell you that this is what happened because they really do not understand. The teacher will just go to an extent, okay. right? And then um, to what extent should we even, information should we bring to these children, like I said? From 10 years and below, I feel you should... You should, you should have anything necessarily pictorial, right? But the, 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 to the extent of the, the picture should be maybe just show, don't allow anybody to touch your armpit, don't allow anybody, you know, there can be a song or a rhyme to it, you know, but you don't go all the way to the intercourse part. Okay, but, but when you know, 10 year children, old children right now, 9 year, 10 year old children are already in junior secondary school. And with, with the way the world is going, um, the world is advocating for safe sex. I think the world is tired of. The world is done. They've lost the battle to saying, be celibate, do not have sex. The world is now getting to, okay, if you have to have sex, have safe sex. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of detail out there in schools, yeah. you know. And if safe sex means using protections, and they, it's like, they even give these things free to schools, to students. So how, how can we help balance that? Because I think parents have to now know that. Now the world is now teaching. The the world is helping, exposing. teaching, teach. Yeah, exposing them to this is what is happening, but it's telling them from a place of be safe. Mm -hmm. So I, how do we help? And where does the church even come in all of this? I think the point she made is very important. She said, and that should order so that everybody. So education should start from the home. The parental values should be conveyed to the children from home. Because the child has a confidence. My father will not tell me a wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Mama will not tell me a wrong thing. So you don't need to wait until you are even 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So when that one happens, as the child grows older, even at the age of five or, or even at the age of four, the child is able to talk. I say, no, no, mommy did tell me this one. Just, uh, I tell her say that a father does not tell his child a lie. That's the systems. Then the value, the, the, the home, the background. In a Christian home, Teach the child the, the Bible perspective, okay. the way you should behave, even at that age. Okay, such that when the world brings their own, oh, they come can, to ask you can questions. Feel like they ask questions, then you then the parents should not punish, but they should have the method of correcting, yeah. correcting. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, when you spread the rod, it is say you must kill, so that the child will not have the fear. My kids when they grow up, my baby is about 20, 25 years old. Everything will come and tell you anything innocently, even till tomorrow. I will tell her, no, no, this one should have done. This one's okay, okay. That, that is it. Okay, um, then let's go to the church. I think the church is still, or some churches are still, um, sex is still very sacred. 
so it's not even in the way that God will have the secret. They are still keeping it. No, no, don't tell them, don't tell them. And because of this, when scenarios like this play up in church, it's an abomination. Like the the, the, the teacher was like in church. How are we teaching this in church? So that almost sounds like, oh, I can teach this at home, outside church, but I can't teach this in church. What do you have to say to, um, you? I know you work with a lot of teenagers and their coaches and their uh, teachers. How do you, what do you tell them? You know, what should they know now about sex education and the church? Okay, um, for the teenagers, you know, you, like when we, we initially said that sex education starts from the home. Now, where th there's a void, right, and then these children are brought to us, right, from where do we start helping these children? First of all, we have to teach them what the scripture says about staying pure, right, and that sex or sexual intercourse or sex, that everything has to do with sex, remains holy in a marriage union until they are married. It is not meant for exploration before that time. So if they had such experiences before now, make them understand that they have been going the wrong path, mm -hmm. right? And teach them that this is what they are supposed to do, right? Many of these children have been molested, they've been sexually abused from, from very young, you know, which exposed them to a lot of things. Some of them stumbled on pornography, some of them stumbled on, on um, or saw scenes where their siblings were doing it, yeah. right, at home. And then they kept an image in their head, and that has, you know, burdened them and you know, tormented them for years. And they just found themselves doing things that they're not supposed to do. So we make them understand that these are things that God frowns at, you know, and teach them what they should do. They ought to keep themselves pure. They ought to keep themselves safe. And if someone is trying to violate them in any way, they need to open up. Many of them tell us things that their parents don't even know about. Okay out of fear that uh, if I tell my parents, they will say I'm wayward, I'm, I'm, I'm foolish, I'm stupid, I'm, 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 I'm worthless, right? You know, but we, we bring them in, you know, and embrace them in and make them have that confidence to always talk to us and tell us things. And when we see that, oh, we need to bring these things up to the, the parents, right? Because children always believe that their parents know everything. Sure. Because yeah, right yeah, from yeah. when you were small, you eat biscuits, and you hide, and your parents are able to know that Find you, out. you yeah. had biscuits. <laughs> you know, so they expect that, oh, when I was molested, mommy, you should have known that something happened to me. Yes. Mommy, you should have known that something happened to me, but nobody ever even noticed. And so they kept that a secret for the, to themselves and grew up with that for years. So we, we, we get to bring these things in and, and when necessary, bring their parents in. So sex education should not be a no-no in churches? No, no, it shouldn't. Okay. It shouldn't. Okay. Okay. Reverend, do you want to say something about that? No, that's, that's my bad. Okay. That's my bad. It should be taught wisdom yeah not experimental so have a biology, biology class or practical <laughs> um okay so let's get down to what we need to discuss first of all i think i have a, a slight issue with the teacher the children teacher what when should you not tell your pastor when should you handle something just amongst you and the child because the children trust their children teacher sometimes even more than they trust their parents so if and everything they do, you have to call their parents, call the pastor, call everybody. We're going to groom a set um, set of children I don't trust anymore to talk to. So, what? How should um, teenage or children teachers use their discussion in you know handling issues, Reverend? The teacher was obviously ignorant. He has forgotten about. I wouldn't know whether I was taught psychology. I wouldn't know whether I taught individual differences. <laughs> Otherwise, he should have known that those children they were simply playing on what they know best, which of course may be wrong. It was left for him to say, no, my dear, uh, okay, this thing shouldn't have been, uh, okay, you are told this, okay, uh, uh, this, okay, this is used, but it's not used by people, it's used when you are married, when you're of age. But God frowns at, so, so that's what he should have done. But I wouldn't wonder the teacher is or was a Christian. He was a kind of, this uh, Primogopak teacher with a king. Why dare you start talking talk about this one? What's the secret about uh, this in the, uh, about So what are you talking about? So he should have be able to settle the case right there, educate them, correct them, and the children would have got confidence as their teacher. Because most learners of people, students, they think that whatever their teacher says goes. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, just still on what he's saying. He, he talked about individual differences and a lot of psychology stuff. We have children teachers in church that are just children teachers. 
there's no other department for them to go to. So should there be a special qualifications for our children and teenage teachers? Should there be something that pastors should look out for before handling? Because you're a mother, oh, this one has five children, let her just be a children teacher. That's how it happens most times. Okay, for, for, for children, um, children's church or children's ministry, it's a ministry. Right? It's, it's a ministry. We, we many times look down on it, like, oh, the children, so that we can pay attention to the, to the, to the service, the main yes. service, and what pastor is saying. So just put the children off somewhere where they, we can have our peace, at least for the next three to four hours. You know, but children's ministry is a ministry. There's a calling there. It's not just for everyone, right? I would advise that pastors interview, you know, people, prospects, people who want to be part of the children's ministry, not just anybody, mm. right? Not just, you don't just put anybody there. You know the person's passion, you know? Have a talk with the person, have an interview with the person, and know where this person is coming from, right? There's a, there's a children's ministry coordinator also, right? Which he should have also brought into the picture, mm. right? So, so before you, you went you over to the to, pastor, yeah. Before you take it out to your pastor. So the person just, John protocol and just went straight to the pastor. So I think um, for children's instructors or children's church teachers, you know, they should be trained. They they have they have, training. They have, they yeah. have monthly trainings where okay, where issues like this come up, what, what do, do we, we answer? Do? You know, there are, there, are, there are questions like that. If a child asks you who created God, you know, how do we answer how, answer this question? So such things should come up during their meetings, you know, their trainings, you know, as a, as in Training prior, prior to their Sunday meetings. Yeah. To tell them, okay, when such things come up, how do we then mm -hmm. they trade up? Okay. You know, I think that's important. Uh, in addition to what you have just said, the teachers should have, if possible, to have enough teaching of psychology, child growth and development. If they were not exposed as in secular education, mm -hmm. then the weekly or the monthly training should, should, should be done. Yeah. Sky.